Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting episode of AP Physics B Learning Targets with your host, Mr. Bennett. Tonight, we're going to be talking about uh, momentum and how it relates to mass and velocity for moving objects. So the equation for momentum is pretty straightforward here. We use P, which stands for p momentum, I guess. M was already taken for mass, so why not P? Um, it's going to be the product of mass and velocity. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that mass is a scalar quantity, velocity is a vector quantity. Whenever we multiply a vector by a scalar, we get a vector that's in the same direction as our starting vector. It just has a different length, a different magnitude. So we're going to multiply that magnitude of V by M. And that's going to be our momentum, but same direction as that velocity vector. Uh, so if we wanted to find the, uh, the total momentum of multiple objects, well, we could just add those together. But keep in mind that momentum is a vector, so we have to do vector addition. Uh, and then we can uh, further expand this to total momentum equal to mass 1 times velocity 1 plus mass 2 times velocity 2 and, and so on like that. Now when we do a mass times a velocity, mass times velocity, the units for this are going to be kilograms times meters per second. And that's the units that we're going to use for momentum. We don't have any uh, fancy abbreviations like newtons or joules with this one. Usually it's just written out as kilogram meter per second. So let's try an example problem with this. Uh, so I know you, you're probably thinking on you know quite a bit in this class, hey, what's the idea with pushing all these boxes? What do these boxes have in them anyway? Well, you know, typically my boxes are filled up with uh, frictionless pulleys and, and massless springs. And I realize you might say, well, can you just store those in boxes? You know, don't they go bad? Well, you know, don't worry, because uh, I, I maintain a bo uh, vacuum inside the boxes. So, you know, they'll stuff fresh for a long time. So in one of these boxes, um, I've got just a couple of, uh, of frictionless pulleys in there. And, you know, I haven't been doing much pushing in these boxes lately, but hey, these pulleys are frictionless, so you know they're moving around in there. There's nothing there to slow them down. Frictionless and in a vacuum, they're moving. So we've got one that's moving to the north at 1.2 meters per second, and another to the east at 1.5 meters per second. We've got the mass for each of these. These aren't my massless frictionless pulleys, just my frictionless pulleys. Um, and so we're looking for the total momentum of these two. Now, Total momentum doesn't have uh, a whole lot of usefulness until we get into collisions um, and, and how momentum is conserved um, in, in those interactions. Uh, but that'll be a topic for uh, another episode. So for right now, we're just going to look at total momentum. So we've got, first off, one object that's three, uh, 0.35 kilograms moving to the north at 1.2 meters per second. And we've got another one, 0.35 kilograms. It's moving to the east at 1.5 meters per second. So first step on this is I'm going to need to go back up to my equations here. I'm going to need to figure out what the mass times the velocity of each one of these would be. And these are vectors, so I can't just ignore the direction. So first off, momentum for this guy. Momentum as a vector is going to be 0.35 kilograms, just a scalar quantity, times 1.2 meters per second, and that's to the north, so just put a little note there. And then the momentum on that is going to be 0.35 times 1.2, oops, 0.35, 0.42, and that's kilogram meters per second north. And then for this one, we're going to have uh, our momentum vector. It's going to be again 0.35 kilograms. It's a scalar times our velocity vector, 1.5 meters per second. This one's to the east. And so the momentum vector 
is going to be 3.5 times 1.5 is 0.525 kilogram meters per second east. All right, so now I want my total momentum. So total momentum, all I have to do is add up the individual momenta. That's this, um, uh, the plural for momentum is momenta. Uh, the individual momenta for each one of my objects. So I've got two momenta. I'm going to add those together, but remember they're vectors. So we have to do vector addition on this. So I've got a cat who's really excited about momenta, it sounds like. Got one momentum vector, which is 0.42 kilogram meters per second to the north, and then another vector, which is 0.525 kilogram meters per second to the east, and then my resultant. Uh, let's get a new colorful resultant. That's a special vector. This will be my overall momentum or net momentum. And I'm going to find out what this angle is as well. So my net momentum, just the magnitude, so I don't have the, uh, the vector symbol on there, is going to be equal to 0.525 kilogram meters per second. And that's all squared. This one needs to be squared too, plus 0.42 kilogram meters per second. And that gets squared. So this gives me a magnitude for my momentum vector of 0.525 squared plus 0.42 squared, and then I'll square root my answer, 0.672 kilogram meters per second. Oops, there we go. And then last bit we need to do here is figure out what theta is. That's going to be the inverse tangent of 0.525 over 0.42. So the inverse tangent, don't forget to make sure you're in degree mode for this, that's very important. 0.42, that's going to give us 51 degrees. So our overall momentum as a vector is 0.672 kilogram meters per second at 51 degrees, and that looks like it would be east of north. Uh, the last step with this, the next step rather, is going to be looking at the idea of this total momentum value staying constant and what things we can learn based on that. That's all for this video though.